do what you did. It's so easy to just go hide underneath a rock and, and, and just hide away. Um, so thank you so much for what you did, and I think everybody here is uh, also on board with that. But Thank you. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> I love what Jim Carrey said to you. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was really helpful. I don't know when you take that, uh, actually. But October 29th. What have you seen or heard since that day that you showed uh, the audience about Jim Carrey and now that really flabbergasts you because it, it's it's gone well and beyond, I'm assuming. Well, it, it it's double, okay, so I have two lives. My online life is horrible, like it's just a beat down. And I know a lot of people get that, but like, if you post a picture of me, I'm just apologizing ahead of time, you're gonna get flooded with robots that say ISIS lady be bad. And we're not people, but it's hurtful. And yet in real life, I'm getting more people that are actually nice enough to come up and say something. But I still get confronted a lot and people say crazy shit to my face. And I've had a lot of incidents, um, like it, I'm sure, uh, the first night uh, of the world tour was in Auckland, New Zealand, and somehow there was a Trump fan there in Auckland, New Zealand, which is very far. And um, he came in and he threw a bottle at my head so hard that I heard it whisk past my ear, and it hit the curtain about 10 feet behind me. And, you know, so I, I was like, should I say that? And I thought, no, I don't want it to become like a thing. And uh, he was so crazy, he went to the local paper and he bragged about it. He's like, I'm the guy that just threw a bottle at Kathy Griffin. So there's a lot of like security issues that are still, you know, with me and stuff. Um, and the FBI really had, had come by that day. It, it was a no, no not. So uh, I'm hoping that people sort of come around. And I also, uh, when, it came, when it came to the States, I, I waited a little bit. I went to Canada first. I went crazy. And um, I also, one thing, I like, one of the things that I've, I've learned along the way is that, sorry, when the tour was canceled, I found out later from the theaters that were called saying, you know, I'm going to come and shoot her in the con, they were robocalls. Because when the theater owners talk to each other, they have the same tape. Same calls. Wow. I know. So I don't blame the theater owners. Like it's not their fault. They're not used to getting that kind of call. Who would be? But I, I also um, changed my whole business model because I'm still blacklisted in Hollywood, and I still don't have one single day of paid work ahead of me the rest of my life, which terrifies my inner John Rivers. Is my microphone? It's all mic. Um, and so, um, uh, you know, I kind of like parted with Live Nation because I think they just didn't know what to do with me. And I have a very clear understanding. I'm a completely different artist overnight. You know, I went from being Kathy Griffin from Sully Susan in the D-list, and I've done Super Bowl ads and all this other stuff. And now I'm, you know, a uh, card-carrying member of ISIS. Oh, you want to hear my joke now? <laughs> when people confront me on the street, and they're like, go back to ISIS. I always go, I work in the gift shop for like a week. <laughs> um, and so I hired a marketing firm from Washington, D.C., and they taught me how to take over my tour business, which was great. So it, it's, uh, they taught me how to really uh, geo-target and find the actual fans that would really buy tickets. It's called Cambridge Analytica. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> and so I started doing my own ad buys and I started learning how to promote my own shows, which, uh, you know, Live Nation didn't, didn't care for. And um, I remember they would call me and scream at me and say, who do you think you are and stuff. And I would say, you guys don't get it. You can't just market me in a banner ad with Toby Keith. Different demo. <laughs> and, you know, and so what I really loved that was taking over the tour business and I learned everything, how to get the ushers and the concession stands and the projector and how much the insurance is and which venues they can't cancel and can. And, I um, sold out Carnegie Hall in less than 24 hours. Woo! And I know, that's a big deal when you're like, yeah. <laughs> and so, um, just as like a fuck you, I wanted to play Radio City the night before, because no other comedian has done that. So Live Nation kept saying no, and so I just wired the rent, $250,000. And then they called me like screaming at me, and they go, you know, who do you think you are just sending rent money to Radio City? You can't sell those tickets. I go, I'm the renter. So I'll decide, and it's none of your business, you're still getting your 15%. But it was great to be able to take control of the concert business because once I knew how the, like when you have access to the actual, actual ticket sales, I would learn like, oh, okay, I'm gonna drop the Loge tickets by five bucks and sell out the Loge in two, two days or whatever. So it's all this information that when you're, when you're in such a specific weird situation like me, you can't be sort of just thrown into the like, okay, we're gonna promote it like you know, Jim Gaffigan or like somebody who doesn't swear and stuff. So that part actually was really, 
helpful and learning. And also I love what David Pepper flipped from AMI, because a lot of people don't know, they don't just have the globe and the acquirer, they um, did an acquisition about two years ago, probably Saudi money, I'm assuming, but they now have OK, Us Weekly, um, Life and Style, In Touch, and that's why all those hit pieces were out on me, saying I had lupus, which makes me maybe uninsurable if someone believes it, or saying I was bald because I had shaved my head in solidarity with my sister who was going through cancer. And so when David Pepper flipped, I was like, open the fucking vault. So the idea, it's real. Like, Trump really does talk to these tabloids, and they just, you know, target people. So that, like, there's news coming out all the time that's fascinating, and I, I learn more. I hope it's validating that we're all here. It's unbelievable. Yes. It's unbelievable. <laughs> this is a little selfish thing. Is anyone here? here? Is there any way I can get a photo with you really fast? Oh, yeah, come on. All right, come on. He did. <laughs> He's in the front row. Yay. <laughs> Now, when you post it, I'm just warning you, it's not going to be pretty. <laughs> <laughs> and just say it's me and Reba. Love Reba. <laughs> <laughs> just make it easy. All right, who else? Any ladies? Woo! Woo! All right, ladies. Hi. Hi. Um, I want to say I love you, and you're amazing. Oh. This is not the end of your career. This is the very this peak oh. of your career, and you're doing amazing. Thank you. But was there ever a time that you felt like you were going to get out of it, and what helped you? She asked if there was ever time I thought I wasn't going to get out of it, what helped me? Um, you know, there was always, a, there was never a time when I knew I wasn't going to be trying. Because I'm just too hardwired to do it, and, you know, um, I love what I do so much, and I've been doing it so long, and I've been through, I've had, a, like, a rocky ups and downs anyway, but nothing like this. So, I never, uh, I never doubted my uh, willingness to do get down in the mud and do whatever it takes and bite and scratch my way back. I don't know what will happen. I don't know what the future holds at all. But um, I love it so much that I also feel so strongly that what this film can do is I've certainly spoken to many, many people across the world, and more so even in the last six months, that are really understanding. That's why I, I sell t-shirts that have the First Amendment on it, because sometimes people forget the words, and they don't, you know, there's a reason it's the first. I don't know the other amendments, but I know this one. <laughs> and, you know, freedom of assembly. And so, you know, as you know, more people were arrested at Trump's inaugural for protesting than have ever been arrested before. Well, these are regular people, right? They may not have the money to fucking bail themselves out or get representation. So this is a story I hope people see across all fields. I also personally feel like there's an ageism element and a misogynistic element. So, I mean, of course, I would trigger the Donald. I'm like his antithesis of anything, everything he thinks a woman should do, right? So I always wanted to keep fighting, but I still don't know what will happen. So I thought, well, I can tell my dick jokes, and people show up sometimes. So um, that's what I just want to do is just keep uh, looking for work. And I'm also I'm super brazen about it. Like I'll just DM showrunners and go, give me five lines on your show. I don't care what character I play. No burkas. No, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually going to um, uh, do a lot of pro bono work, but well, guess what? I got to give a speech at Oxford about the First Amendment. The school. Yay. Yay. Um, and uh, starting in LA, I'm going to go really back to my roots. Even though I said I would never play clubs again, but I'm going to do um, five Mondays in a row at the Laugh Factory on Sunset, and um, I'm going to. It's just called Kathy Griffin: A New Hour Every Week. Because I just want to show I can do a new hour every week. So I'm just going to do that for the love of the game. And I, I may m mention Trump sometimes or not, but I just love doing it. I can't help Yay. myself. So yeah. Yay. Let's get back to the back. Yeah, yeah.
show. I actually had like a couple more versions made, but I just felt it was sort of symbolic. And, um, you know, I knew the show was going to be about the incident. I knew that when I showed up at any theater, people were going to want to hear all the tea, and it would be weird if I did a whole act not mentioning this, this incident. And the fact that the photo is still, like what keeps ginning it up is like the image just keeps getting uh, reconfigured and reused, like, uh, sucks. The image is in the new NRA ad, and I know, and it's it's like, you know, do you want your child to grow up to be in ISIS like Kathy Griffin and there I am. And uh, I know, NRA. And so uh, it's in the new GOP ad, so it keeps coming up. So I've kind of learned, like, I'm a Hanoi Jane. Like, this is going to be with me the rest of my career. And so I hope to then just keep working and keep making people laugh in any way I can. I'd love to do even public speaking at schools and talking to young people about, like, knowing their rights and understanding it's all about voting down ballot as well. It's not just the presidential election and stuff like that. And the way that I'm learning the First Amendment affects everyone in their daily life. I will say one of the things that I think people are finally coming around about is that photo was so shocking to people. And yet when you look at Trump's actual policies and the quote zero tolerance policy, brown people in cages, is probably the most egregious you know, if you had to choose. And so there's also a little bit of a, like a little bit of a paradigm shift. I mean, I'm never gonna get the Trumpers because they're in a cult, um, but I, I think that some of the people that just hated the photo and kind of stopped there, um, sort of go, okay, compared to putting people in cages, which we've never done before, like worse than the internment situation, because he's fucking proud of it and stuff, then I think I, people give me like a little bit of a break. So they go, compared to what he's actually doing, maybe it was just kind of a picture of a mask. Who else? Thank you. Yes? A lady, uh, like, well, I guess everybody has those. <laughs> yes, you, hi. Hi, um, so I loved everything and I know we talked briefly at your podcast. Um, uh, taping a few days ago. Yeah, good to see so you again. Just briefly, I'm a born and raised Austinite, but I went to Washington and overseas for the last 13 years, working as we talked about in the Democracy and Human Rights. It is so appalling to me that in this country people don't um, understand, you know, the Constitution, but more or less don't care about local races and the impact of, you know, presidential appointments and, mm -hmm. and the appellate courts and everything. Yeah, and I just want to commend you for 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 sharing the story out there. Is there a, a message that you can put out, um, like? Because I know you're a political junkie, and you mentioned that as part of your podcast. Yeah, I've always been like that. Yeah. My whole life, I grew up in a politically <clears throat> aware like house. My dad is a precinct captain, so she's saying that she's worked around the world about human rights. So my hat is off to you because you see the real shit. But you're right. It's it's other countries have looked at our country as a bastion of hope. And to, to think that so many Americans actually believed in the caravan and stuff like that, I mean, I've, I've never seen anything like it in my career. And I remember watching the Nixon hearings as a little kid and thinking, never in my lifetime could anything like this happen. And it's so much worse. So it is discouraging to know so many Americans think this. And it's even more discouraging to know our fate is really in the hand of like five old white dinosaur uh, yeah. senators. And so the people that are mad at my beloved Nancy Pelosi, you have to realize she cannot get him impeached. The Senate will not impeach him. We lost. We lost oh. the Senate. So don't be mad at Nancy because she knows the House will vote to impeach. The Senate won't. So I think, by the way, I think that Putin has a picture of Lindsey Graham fucking a donkey. I don't know what. <laughs> 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 the other ones that can't grow a fucking bear. But and that's what I spend a lot of my time doing is explaining to people, especially overseas, where everywhere I went, they would hear my accent and be like, what the fuck are you guys doing? What happened? And then you try to explain the Electoral College and gerrymandering. So that's why I do tend to focus on the down ballot, because I remind a lot of my gay friends, Kim Davis, remember her, the supervisor that wouldn't marry the two guys? Well, that was an elected position. So that's one of the things I do. And I also like to engage in voter fraud. So I always tweet Kathy, Kathy Griffin's handy dandy voter tips. And they're just liberal and pro, you know, women and pro-gay. And it may be considered voter fraud, but I don't care. <laughs> yes. Um, I was wondering if you can explain to us, for those of you who see the movie, where they can see it. <laughs> and secondly, um, mm -hmm. to use your own words, um, the message that if it happened to you, needs to be carried across to all fields. Yes. There are some fields that won't see the film, but I think need to understand the message. Have you found an effective way to speak to them? Well, the, I guess the way this thing works is you get, you hope to get a distributor. So I don't know, I funded the whole thing and I was gonna, you know, I, I pitched it as a TV special to every single television channel and streaming service and they all said no. <clears throat> they wouldn't even look at like a 30 second sizzle reel. They just, persona non grata, that's it. Even the mid-level people that would like it, 
they would kick it upstairs and the check signer would say, uh-uh, Kathy Griffin, no way. So I hope that it gets distributed, but you're correct about it happening in all fields. So for example, one of the reasons I would really love to do a speaking tour and more people should be made aware of this is, this is, you know, it's a much worse situation and I don't want people to think it's a Hollywood story. You know, in the, um, uh, the food service industry, this sort of thing is rampant and there's many, many professions where, uh, I mean, I talk about money a lot, for example, because I think it's important that women start talking openly about money because that's their game is the boss doesn't want you knowing the guy in the cubicle next to you makes twice as much as you. So yeah. I think it's important and there shouldn't be any shame. I bought my house for ten and a half million dollars cash. There you go. And because um, my friend Susie Orman said, girlfriend, if you can't afford to buy it in cash, you can't afford it in D9. But I said, no, no, I'm going to make it. And so I know that sounds braggadocious, but it's also like I call it my fuck you house. So when all these old white like, dinosaur executives come over, I'm like, hi, I like me now. Uh -huh. And so it's kind of like part of my shtick, but I also think it's important that uh, disenfranchised people, and frankly, just as a 58-year-old female comedian, but, you know, people of color, gay folks, younger folks, you know, stick together. Because you've got to admit, the other team, they're like fucking dirty cops. They stick together, rose before rose, no matter what. And we Dems, we tend to like debate things and get fractured. And, you know, the dark side of feminism is, I hate to say it, but often when the chips are down, women tend to fracture. So this has to be the time. This is it. Like, we have to stick together. Male, female, but we, I think we're like-minded. At least we got to keep this democracy because it is frightening to see how quickly it could become a kleptocracy and you know that all, all of the detention centers you know prisons you know they're all privately owned so when you see United States senators Booker Merkley going down there they take heat because they don't take footage from inside they can't get inside those are run by Eric Prince and Betsy DeVos and all the Blackwater crowd so that's something to just you know they're always trying to suppress that knowledge and that's what I realized I was I was a shiny object and um, my photo was days after they had appointed Bob Mueller. And that's what this administration is effective at doing. They are good at putting up a shiny object when they've done something really, really heinous. So I think just sort of spreading the word and giving people real information and telling people, most importantly, social media is not news, okay? I can't believe how many people believe that shit is news. And, you know, when people say they get their news from Facebook or Twitter, I'm like, yeah, they don't have uh, secondaries or tertiaries. Read a paper. Every day I read WAPO, New York Times, LA Times, Mother Jones, Politico, Slate. And why not? Like, what else are you doing? And so to get real information, and you don't have to get like in fights with people, but real information is power, and they know that. That's why they want to fucking dumb us down, and that's why you got to cheat to get your kids into college. What about that story? Uh -huh. I can talk about that all night, right? Right. In 500,000, the kids don't even know how to row? Sorry, I digress. <laughs> <laughs> My last question, very busy. Uh, so I just want to say I have been a fan of yours forever. I grew up in Southern California. Thank you. Like, love it. Um, thank you so much for doing this film. There is just, you know, a little teeny part of me that would really love to know, are you going to take those last few words in that First Amendment and petition our government for those grievances? Because I think that you have all of the things that you need to really, you know, not only spread this message, which I'm so proud of you for doing, but to really show people like that it has to work both ways. Yeah. Well, I, I've actually considered suing Donald Trump and I have talked to a lot of do it. attorneys. Um, <laughs> shock, nobody will do it pro bono. I've already spent about $2 million in legal fees. Um, but um, I will say this though, seriously, and especially to women, save your money. All right, there is no shame in being, like I said, prudent. All right, you don't have to have fancy shit. I lived in a studio apartment for seven years and I was still living the dream. My rent was $214. Um, I used to, when I was indigent, I got fantastic health care because, you know, I was below the pay, whatever the pay line was, and I would bring my pay stub. And I remember I had like a biopsy removed from my chest for free and stuff like that. So know your resources that are still out there and fight for them on the local level. So I think. I mean, I'm going to be honest, I think all, anything we do from marching to petitions, but more importantly, I think showing up is what scares these guys. Like when people show up at the town halls or um, when you talk to the representatives, no, they only care about their constituents. So if you're calling somebody in another state, they don't give a fuck. But if like two old ladies from their district show up, they get fucking scared and the, you know that makes them nervous. So the sad thing about what's happening with the Republicans and whatever the team Trump is, they, um, they, they are emboldened. 
by this crazy disinformation campaign that's really social media driven. Also, I, I really, I, I think the social media platforms have to be regulated. And I did a talk with Kara Swisher, who's a New York Times reporter and does uh, uh, Recode. Um, and she, you know, she, she said they can do it. They do have the capability, they're just lying. And also, that Jack Dorsey's a fucking asshole. And I tried to get her phone number from him, and she won't give it to me. But I have things to say to him. And same thing with Zuckerberg with those dead eyes. And what about last summer when he thought it'd be adorable to just go to strange people's houses because he wanted to see what it was like to be real? Get your own meal. I would never let that guy in that sense. And, you know, just knowing, knowing that I like them as much as, like, the Russians because I think the social media is currently manipulating elections around the world. Yeah. And they're going to do it again because our orange dumbass loves it. So I, I think we still have to go out in great big numbers. And if I ever, you know, the, the thing is, the president is being sued by so many people, but I've been told by many First Amendment attorneys I could win a case for abuse of power. So maybe someday I'll do it, who, who knows? But more do importantly, it. let's just do the boots on the ground and let's look out for each other because what I learned is when shit goes down, sometimes you're just fucking left on your own. Like I had about 75% of my friends ditch me and never, never came back. Many of my relatives ditched me and never came back. So. Once you embrace that and understand that, and that's why it was good that Jim Carrey was direct with me, it's good to be honest with yourself, honest with your situation, and um, then, like I said, you can go forward. And I, I think things like Indivisible Group are amazing, where it started with one little group, and now they're all over in red states and blue states. And you keep, keep fighting for the stuff that I didn't think we'd have to fight for anymore. Like, when I was growing up, I didn't think we'd still be fighting for Planned Parenthood. I thought we'd have a female president. But people think Hillary Clinton has a sex ring in a pizza parlor. You know, so <laughs> that's the world we're living in. So I think be aware of it. And then find your peeps and click up with them, because that's what they fucking do. And, you know, by the way, just so you know, Antifa, you know how the right wing is afraid of Antifa? It's like seven guys. It's just not a big, like, and, and sometimes, like, the Charlie Kirk assholes, they'll dress up like Antifa and go, like, knock over, like, a barrel with fire in it and be like, Antifa did this, lefty. No, it's not. It's them. So we got to kind of be better at, we got to be in the mud for, like, a couple years. Then we can maybe get some grace back. But until then, fuck it. Down and dirty, get it done, stick together, stay together, educate yourself, and have a laugh while you're doing it, hopefully. Yay! Yay. 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 Yay.